Alrighty. So today we are going to be trying to fix up a Pioneer PD4050 CD player. So I got this on eBay. Uh, I think it was like $25 delivered. So I think half of that was shipping. So it was very inexpensive. So I bought this, I bought this broken. It, uh, they said it just didn't play any discs. So we'll see if I can fix it. I've always kind of had the idea that you can't fix CD players, but we'll see if we can do it. So we can see it turns on okay. The it opens okay. So that's that's all working fine. So I mean, it must just be something wrong with how it plays discs. So got to, had to actually get some CD CDs because I didn't I didn't have any. I don't have a CD player. <laughs> Uh, hitting the play button and yeah, nothing. Doesn't even try to spin it. And yeah, you can you can hear something inside of that. So that's that's uh, that's not good. So I have to figure out what that's uh, rolling around inside there. So I don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, I think it's uh, September t 1987. It's said on the back there, so reasonably old, at least from my perspective. Uh, fairly easy to take off or to take apart. The all the all the screws are there, so that's always a good sign. So I don't think anyone else has been in here, and that's what was rolling around. And that to me looks like a lens, which is pretty important for a CD player, I would imagine. So I'm trying to get to the actual laser mechanism to see if I can see if that lens is gone. And uh, yeah, it looks like it could go there, and it definitely should go there. So, for now, I'm just setting it in there to see if that'll do anything. And trying that CD again. And it looks like it's trying to spin, but it just, it's not spinning. So right now, I'm also thinking maybe something's wrong with the motor. Like, it doesn't have enough power to get the CD spinning fast enough. So I was trying to give it a little help there with my finger, but yeah, it still, it didn't read anything. And... You can see that light come on, so the, the laser is working. So that's a good sign. So I'm just going to try to get this mechanism out and have a better look at it. So it's just four screws holding it down to the chassis. Uh, and the first three are pretty easily accessible, but the uh, the last one is behind all this plastic stuff. But luckily it just kind of clips out. It's actually very easy to take apart. Those are all just plastic clips that hold it in. And unfortunately, I still couldn't quite get to it, so I had to take off this uh, disc stabilizer. I think it's funny that there's a lot of branding on the inside of the machine, which is it's weird, because no one would really see this. So it's funny that they went to the effort of molding in, like, just advertisements, essentially, inside of the machine. So I got that last screw out, and yeah, it comes out. I just need to take off this uh, ribbon cable. Yeah, hair inside. There's actually a lot of long hairs inside of this machine. I don't know if this was owned by a woman at some point, uh, but there is not an insignificant amount of hair inside of this machine. So I gotta get this ribbon cable off. And like I said, it's from 1987, and I don't know how long ribbon cables have been around for, but that it seems like a pretty early usage of a ribbon cable. I haven't really seen one before in anything I've taken apart. Uh, but to be honest, this is probably the most recent thing I've I've taken apart in my uh, Hi-Fi adventure so far. I gotta get all these wires out from uh, these clips and get that unplugged. So it comes apart pretty easily. So like I had said, first kind of idea was maybe the motor's gone bad. So I'm just connecting this to my power supply to see if I can get this motor spinning. And... Yeah, we can see it's it's spinning almost immediately at 3 volts. Uh, so I, I put it up to 12 volts, and yeah, it seems to be spinning fine. No problems there, so... It's gotta be, uh, problem's gotta be somewhere else. So I've gotta take this apart further. And as I mentioned earlier, I really didn't have any hopes for fixing this, because I've always had this idea in my head that once the CD player goes, it's, it's unrepairable. Uh, just because there's so many finicky things inside of it that it's you just need to replace things essentially once once it goes bad but we'll see if i can get this working so spring goes flying somewhere i do eventually figure out where that goes and we can see the laser mechanism there in my hands so it's just held down 
this uh, this case is just held down by these plastic clips so a little fiddling with that and I was able to get it removed and we can see the uh, little spot where that lens is supposed to go and we can see the magnets and the coils that uh, help with tracking so I'm going to attempt to just glue it back in place so I want to make sure I get that nice and clean so I just used a microfiber uh, cloth to get the uh, inside of that clean and then I'm just using some glue and you can see where the old glue was so I'm just putting some where it used to be and then a little bit extra too so we got some on the other side and uh, I just kind of get it all around it so time to put this back in and uh, put it in upside down because it didn't fit <laughs> uh, so I got the glue cleaned off or at least a lot of it luckily I didn't get any on the lens itself it just got on that lip so I'm just trying to gently set this back in place and got it in. So just pressing it down, making sure it's seated. And then I got the uh, macro lens on, just making sure that's it's all uh, seated correctly. You can see some of the remnants of that, that glue I got on the, uh, the lip there. So I come back through with that microfiber cloth and just try to get the rest of it off and yeah that looks pretty good so this is the next day so the glue's all hardened up and it's in there pretty solidly so let's get this put back together and see if we can uh, get some music out of this and like I said I'm really not expecting this to work just re-gluing the lens back on I mean surely it has more issues than that Pretty interesting it has these uh, ceramic spacers on it. I don't know why they would have used ceramic here, uh, but yeah, it's just kind of interesting nonetheless. I think it's a pretty good um, anti-vibrational mounting. So even with those screws all the way in, you can see how much it can move around. I mean, needless to say, it still skips a lot. Uh, <laughs> but oh, that might have been that might have been some spoilers actually. So trying to get this disc stabilizer part back in and yeah I couldn't I couldn't get the spring in the right place uh, so this is when I kind of figured out okay I need to take the the front panel off of this if I want to get that disc stabilizer back in place and so you can see that little uh, point sticking out with the spring goes just holds it in And then just setting in and clipping in the other bit of plastic that holds the discs down. And seems to be working so far. You can hear it's still making some noise, which it wasn't doing before. Like it's, it's trying to move it, but it can't. So I hit play here and you can see it indexed the disc correctly. We have track zero one. So it knows there's at least one track there and it's trying and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was pretty excited. I, I had zero expectations for this thing working, but you can hear it's still it's making grinding noises. So I did I did something wrong. So I have to look at that. Well, unfortunately, this thing was not as easy to fix as I thought it was going to be. So it was working, and then it wasn't working. So as you saw, it was playing the disc fine. Uh, and I played quite a lot of that disc and it, it was perfectly fine. I ejected it and I tried something else and it worked. Tried something else and then it started making a bit of a grinding noise. Um, and it was not loading the discs anymore. So I took this thing apart again, trying to figure out what was going on. And I could see when it was uh, trying to go back to its home base it wasn't so the home would be up here where the laser is closest to the center of the disc now it wasn't quite getting there so if I move this out of the way so there's this little limit switch right there and this is what tells the device when that laser is back at its home spot in the center and that's when it's like okay now you can start trying to index the disc or whatever 
Now this was not able to get there. It kept skipping. Now the way this laser tra uh, traverses is via this screw and this piece of plastic. So this piece of plastic just slides on here and it's, it's kind of like a lead screw on a lathe where you have this half nut, I think it's called. Now what was happening is as this was getting closer and closer to the home, right before it got to the button, it would just kick out a little bit. It would just do this. So the screw would try to pull it in and it would just, there wasn't enough tension holding it. And looking at this, this thing's broke. There should be a little bit more to it. Yeah, you can see that jagged edge there. And yeah, digging more into this, I found that. So I found the other half of that half nut. So got to get that glued back on. Probably try to reinforce it with some epoxy. Um, I don't, I looked for this part online. Uh, it, it exists in catalogs, but there's, there's no stock. So this, this part at one point used to exist, but uh, not anymore that I can find. And I, this is, I definitely do not think I would be able to replicate this well enough, especially getting the, the threads on this correct and in the right spot and everything. So I think my best chance is just getting this glued and try to reinforce it a little bit. But yeah, not a great design, just having basically all of the tracking is relying on that piece of plastic not breaking, which it unfortunately did break. And I don't know if that was my fault that it broke, if I assembled it wrong, or if it was just the next thing to break, but yeah, not a not a great design. I think this is a later Pioneer, 1987, so I think their quality was really starting to go down uh, by this time, but yeah, let's, uh, let's get that glued. Alrighty, and so I've got this super glued back together now, and I'm just going to use the soldering iron trick that I showed in the last video to kind of melt the plastic back together. And when I was editing this, I I kind of had a thought. I wonder if I snapped off this plastic when I first pulled that laser assembly out um, to, to look at where that lens was missing, because I just kind of yoinked it out. Uh, and so I, I, I wonder if that's where that snapped. I mean, it did work for a little bit, even with that broken, but yeah. So I, I'm, as you just saw there, I had that glued back together, melted, and then I put some epoxy on that joint as well. And so I've got this all assembled again, and we can see it, 13 tracks it found, so that's a good sign. And hitting play, and it took a while, but it did eventually start playing this, this first track. So that's a great sign. And it's not making any of those grinding noises that it was making. And skip it to track two, it works fine. And if we skip to one of the much later tracks, yeah, it's still working fine. So that's a great sign. So I'm glad I, I'm glad I was able to get that fixed, because that's basically everything that was wrong with this. So yeah, I was I was very surprised how kind of straightforward it was to get this fixed. So just time to start cleaning it now, though. The, uh, the disc tray really was was not that dirty, which it's not ex unexpected. It's inside of the machine the majority of the time. And here I'm just taking off the front panel connectors to get to the plastic, just to make it easier to clean. Uh, I originally wasn't even gonna remove that because there's a lot of plastic clips on there, but I, I definitely am glad I did because behind this play button was a little surprise, just a just an ancient mummified spider back there. <laughs> so that's a, that was a nice surprise. So just using the regular 409 cleaner soaking it in a bit uh, really it's not that dirty the front panel of these machines typically is not that dirty uh, it's always the the top case because that's where it's sitting so that's where it's collecting the most dust but it, it shined up really well actually so I didn't live that hard of a life uh, and yes I did just break up a piece of plastic while I was while I was cleaning it put a little too much weight on one of those tabs so I'll have to get that glued back in And I got that uh, spider removed. It just it just turned to dust, honestly, when I when I went to remove it. But I got it out of there, and then just getting the rest of that spider web out.
And like I said, the top of these machines are typically the dirtiest, so I just let it soak in that 409 for a, a little while before I started scrubbing it down. And the top shined up pretty well too. It's got a bit of gum or something we'll have to address. And yeah, you can see it was it was pretty dirty. I don't know what this is. If that's gum or just some kind of sticky something, it, it wasn't stuck on very well. Just kind of you know, picked it off and then I could wipe the residual off. And I'm just using some epoxy to fix uh, where I snapped off that plastic tab. So it just has a hole in it and that's where it's, it, it, this is what it uses to hold the front panel onto the machine. So it shouldn't be under too much pressure ever really. And I cut out a lot of fiddling. It took me actually a while to get that uh, front panel stuff connected to the, the plastic again. There's a lot of little tabs and whatnot. And got this all assembled and screwed back together and yeah, the, the mechanism seems to be working fine. It's not jamming up anywhere. And also, I'm just noticing this now. It looks like it's kind of caved down on the top there. And then I didn't, I didn't even notice this until right at the end. It's, it's missing the feet. I don't know how I didn't notice that, but yeah, the four feet are missing. So prior on, I must have removed those to fit that somewhere. But I just 3D printed a couple of replacements. I'm sure the original would have had some kind of vibrational dampening something in it, but I just printed some very simple feet, just press fit in. So got those stuck in there. Probably put some kind of grippy something on the bottom so it doesn't slide around so much. But yeah, it looks pretty good. So let's put this thing to the test. Uh, again, I mean, we've seen a point. But let's, I mean, it's traditional at this point. We gotta, we gotta play it. So, and we'll leave you with that. So, I thank you for watching. Have a nice day. I mean, come on. You didn't think I would just have you look at a plain CD player now.